Hey, hey, hey. How you doing, everybody? Just wanted to uh, just come in and uh, just uh, speak. Just wanted to uh, touch on a couple things and uh, go over some uh, some very uh, life, uh, you know, uh, dilemma situations that are very critical to our livelihood and that most people claim that they live on. You know, so um, you know, like beliefs, uh, faith, uh, you know, doctrines. Uh, the word of God, the gospel, you know, what is the gospel, you know, so, you know, basically the gospel was, uh, is actually was, in Greek terms, was a public announcement of, of uh, glad tidings, uh, it was used for, uh, the gospel was the meaning of public announcement of, say, a victory in war, or uh, a, a new king was elected, or a queen, um, and so forth. So it was to make this up, and, and Christians have used it as glad tidings, as a public announcement of the good news, the message to the world, you know, that God is good, and God is here, and God is real. So, you know, that's uh, some, some, some truth that's undebatable, but still, you know, we got to debate it, and we got to defend it, because uh, that's just the way the world works. So anyways, um, you know, the, you know, it's very, very crucial, very important. A lot of Christians are running around thinking that, you know, that they have it figured out. Hey, you know, once saved, always saved. Um, you know, I can do whatever I want to do, you know, and God, I believe in God. As long as I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm going to heaven. You know, but um, did Jesus Christ really preach that? Did he preach that? Because there are a lot of instructions that he left us. First of all, you can't get into heaven if you're not forgiven. If you're, if you're with the unforgiving, you cannot get in heaven. There's no way. If you're not charitable, if you're not, not charity, every single person in heaven is of charity. Every single one of them. Heaven is full of charity. People who are charitable, people who gave their time, uh, money, uh, to good, to good, to goodness, to greatness, uh, for the hope of saving just one soul. One, one. Paul says in in uh, in First Corinthians nineteen or Second Corinthians nineteen, but First Corinthians nineteen. He says, "Hey, although I came from the law, I am not the law. Although I'm not a Gentile, I became a Gentile. So far, these are just you know. I became all these things in the hopes of just to save one soul." He adapted. He became everything that he needed to become to save just at least one soul. One soul. A lot of people are worried about themselves. You know, uh, you know, am I going to get in heaven? Am I going to get in heaven? That's great. Yes, please. But you got to think about your neighbor. Are they going to get in Are they on their way to get in heaven? You know, think about them as well. We can't dwell on ourselves. We gotta dwell on our neighbors for that neighborly love and to make sure that we're building that community of, of, of goodness, of truth. Uh, every path could be a good path. Every path could be, every road could be a good road. It just depends on what you do on it. You know, and it's, you know, it's all right to get a little funky and stuff, you know, on the, on the path, you know, but if you have to adapt, I, I, uh, I truly believe that. You know, and, uh, you know, if you got to suffer a little bit, you know, suffer, you know, so that you can, you can hope in the, just at least to save the one soul, one soul. So my point here is it's very, very important for us to believe in or us to understand theology. You know, theology is, is, is very critical to, uh, to, to attached to our human condition. You know, for instance, you know, we have a human condition. We're very materialistic people. God made us that way. We're materialistic. And back in the early days, it was like, hey, you know, when there was no buildings or nothing like that, you know, when it was food, you know, we'd scrounge up everything we could. You know, bah, bah, this, is her. this is mine, you know, you know, and, uh, and all that. You know, it was, it was cave-like. You know, it was cave-like. And we had to. That was survival of the fittest. You know, and now, you know, people want to, you know, collect, 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 collect. You know, people buy things they don't even freaking need. You know, they just sit, they just sit in a garage or sit in a closet or something, you know, but they got it. You know, and uh, it's a human condition. God made us that way. But we don't have to submit to materialism 
like we we could be materialistic, but we don't have to submit because once we become materialistic, then we start losing charity. You know, it's like 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 when there's light, light is the absence of darkness. Jealousy is the absence of love. It's impossible to love when there's jealousy there. Materialism takes away from charity. When you're charitable, you're unmaterialistic. So, so my point is, is that people think that, hey, once saved, always saved is the way, you know, but that's not the right Jesus Christ. You're not following the correct Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ, because Christ gave us so many commandments, so many instructions to get into heaven, the Holy Communion. That's why he gave us his body, the Holy Communion, the Eucharist, the Eucharista, is because he knew that we were materialistic, and that's to fulfill our materialistic, materialistic ways of the human condition. His body, his flesh, and his blood, that right there fulfills the materialism that we strive and that we desire in this world. That should fulfill all of it. When you're in truth, when you're in truth, that will satisfy you. That will quench you. God bless you all. I just want, I just had to tell you that because I've been running into some people lately and, you know, some of them are, you know, they're great people. Great people. I give them a hug. I freaking, I'll be there right there for them. But, you know, some of them just, you know, they just, uh, they, 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 they're not following the right Christ. It's not Jesus Christ they're following. It's John Calvin. It's Martin Luther. It's freaking John Knox. It's Joseph Smith. You know, it's the Wesleys. It's, uh. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's all these, uh, the, you know, the Nazarene, the Methodist, the, the Pentecostal, uh, uh, you know, and I love my brothers and sisters. I love my Protestant brothers and sisters, man. I'll take my shirt off and I'll freaking kick a door in for you. But hey, the truth is the truth. It's the way. Jesus Christ said, I'm the, I'm the truth. And John, he said, I'm John 5 or John 8, he said, I'm the, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And every day I say that, I say, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Restore me. Make me brand new. And that's what he does. He does that on point, on freaking, on void. So come on, I love y'all, man. That's the only reason why I'm saying this to y'all, because this is real. This is real. And people that are tapped in, that are in, know that, that you know, that it's, it's, it's serious. You know, this is a real deal, man. You, I mean, a lot of people are just walking around, just taking the faith and the Christian walk for granted. You know, uh, you know uh, it's, it's just, you know, that there can't be any fear. There can't be any boundaries. I leave all the borders off. You know, I go wherever, there's no, there's no limits. There's no limits. So, Master P, if I can make a remake of that, uh, No Limit, uh, you know, and, uh, or Usher, if I can make a remake of that, you know, I'd like to, you know, put a little gospel on that. Boy. <laughs> all right, man, I love you all, man. I'm out. Peace. Eric Jeezy.